In order to avoid making the error called the comma splice, you have to know what a coordinating conjunction is. Now, there are only seven coordinating conjunctions in English. I'll start by showing you what they are. Uh, there, and there is a mnemonic, or a memory uh, enhancing device, for uh, figuring out or recalling which uh, words are the coordinating conjunctions. And it is this, this uh, funny word, fanboys. Uh, and each letter of this word uh, uh, stands for a coordinating conjunction. So here they are, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. so. These are obviously among the most common words uh, in English. They're conjunctions because they join things together. Uh, this is what a conjunction does. And they coordinate because the things that they join together are equal partners. Uh, one isn't more important than the other. They are merely coordinated as opposed to being subordinated where one, is, one grammatical element is, is somehow more important uh, than the other. So, what does that mean? Well, the most common use of coordinating conjunctions would probably, probably be between nouns. For example, in the sentence, we need, uh, we need flour and milk and eggs. Uh, notice that flour, that's a noun, milk, that's a noun, and you've got an and between them, and the, the and is joining two things that are grammatically identical, two nouns, flour, milk. Um, but it, they don't have to come merely between nouns, they can come between any grammatically identical elements in a sentence. So, for example, uh, it is sad, yet funny, yet being a coordinated conjunction, and what it's joining together is two adjectives, sad, funny. Uh, so it is coordinating them. Or similarly, he ran out of the house and into the rain. Here, and is our coordinating conjunction, and the things it's coordinating uh, are prepositional phrases, which are, again, grammatically equal to each other. Out of the house is a prepositional phrase. Into the rain is a prepositional phrase. These are grammatically equal, and any two grammatically equal elements can be joined by a coordinating conjunction. That's their job. Uh, now, this is particularly important uh, to know about if you're going to avoid a common error, the comma splice. Now, to understand what a comma splice is, you have to know what a coordinating conjunction is. Hopefully you have some idea of that. And you also have to know what an independent clause is. An independent clause is a clause that can stand alone as a sentence. That is, it is grammatically complete. So, for example, Zoltan took office. Could that be a sentence? Yes. Therefore, it is an independent clause or any of these things I've just read. He ran out of the house and into the rain. Could that be a, a sentence? It is a sentence. Yes, it is an independent clause. He ran out of the house. That could be a sentence. That's an independent clause. So, a comma splice is the use of a comma between two independent clauses that are not joined by a coordinating conjunction. That's sort of a mouthful, uh, but, uh, but let me show you an example. Zoltan took office. That's an independent clause. I left the country. That's an independent clause. These two things could both be sentences. But look what, how it's written. Zoltan took office, comma, I left the country, period. We had an independent clause to the left of the comma, and we have an independent clause to the right of the comma. But there is no coordinating conjunction following the comma. So here we have two independent clauses joined by a comma, but not joined 
by a coordinating conjunction. And this is the commas was. Uh, so the way you would fix it, there are many ways of fixing it. Uh, you, the easiest is just to take out this comma and put a period. Uh, Zoltan took office, I left the country. But you could also leave the comma there and add a coordinating conjunction. For example, Zoltan took office, so I left the country. Or, and I left the country. Or, but I left the country. There, or, there, or even for, Zoltan took office, for I left the country. These would have different meanings, but they would avoid being comma splices. You could also subordinate this second clause, uh, or the first one. Uh, because Zoltan took office, I left the country. Now, because Zoltan took office, that is not an independent clause, right? You can't just say, because Zoltan took office, period. That's not a sentence. That would be a sentence fragment. So uh, if you put the because there, you would have eliminated the comma splice, because now you don't have two independent clauses. You don't have two things that could stand alone as a sentence. So in that case, the comma would be just fine. But a comma on its own, without a coordinating conjunction to back it up, is not strong enough to unite two independent clauses. So to repeat, the comma splice is the use of a comma between independent clauses that are not joined by a coordinating conjunction.